Hey, hey, this is Julian and you're on Eat The Blocks. And in this video, I'm going to give you an introduction to Web3. Web3 is a JavaScript library to interact with a smart contract on the Ethereum blockchain. So when you are building a decentralized application on Ethereum, after you build your Solidity smart contract, you probably want to build a nice user interface so that your end user can easily interact with your smart contract. The problem is that you need to somehow integrate your user interface with your smart contract. And for that, you have Web3. So you can directly try to communicate with the API of Ethereum and not use Web3, but this is much more complicated. So Web3 makes the whole process much easier. So there is really a lot of value in learning Web3. The problem is there are many tutorials that are very, very outdated because the version of Web3 have changed a lot. So the API between Web3 one version one and pre version one is very different. So you'll see a lot of tutorials that teach you the old API of Web3 and this is very confusing. So in this video, we're going to teach the new API of Web3. So that's Web3 one. So this is only the first video on a series of tutorial on Web3. In this video, this is going to be a high level overview of Web3. But in the other video, we're going to actually code. By the way, I've prepared a short cheat sheet with all the most important information about Web3. So if you want to save some time, get your hand on that. This is totally free. You can get it by following the link in the description. Before we jump into Web3, we need to understand how we can interact with an Ethereum smart contract. So the Ethereum blockchain has an API that allows you to interact with a smart contract. So you're going to have to use this API. So in this API, there are two main ways to interact with a smart contract. The first way allows you to read data from a smart contract. We call this the call API. And the other API allow you to modify data in a smart contract. So we call this the transaction API. So when you use the call or the transaction API of Ethereum, you need to specify a few things. First, you need to specify the address of the smart contract that you want to interact with. Then you need to specify the name of the function that you want to call. Then you need to specify the arguments that you give to this function, if it accepts any. Then you need to specify if you send some ether. So this is only for the transaction API. And finally, you have other, um, other parameters that are specific for transaction. So with a transaction API, you will need to spend some money in order to use it because you need to cover for the gas cost of your transaction. By the way, if you don't know what is gas, I have a whole series on gas on my channel. Another difference is that with the transaction API, you need to wait for your transaction to be mined in a block. And on average, it takes 15 seconds. Whereas for a call, when you are reading from the blockchain, it just immediate, it returns instantly. So if you know a bit of web development, you might be used to REST API. Unfortunately, the API of Ethereum is not like this. Instead, it uses the JSON RPC protocol, which is a little bit more complicated. So with JSON RPC, you have a single endpoint. And when you send data to this endpoint, you specify which action you want to take. So it's like if you have one endpoint that can be demultiplied into many other endpoints. So why we do this? Well, let me make a comparison with traditional REST API. So let's say, for example, you want to interact with Twitter. So for Twitter, you have different routes. So for example, if you want to get all the tweets, then you have a route that is called tweets. If you want to edit a, a tweet, you have a slash tweet, slash edit, uh, et cetera, et cetera, for the different actions. The problem with Ethereum is that we have all this smart contract in the blockchain. So that means we would need so many different endpoints. And also smart contracts are created all the time. So that means that every time we send a new smart contract to the blockchain, we would need to modify the Ethereum uh, software to add a new route. So this is not feasible. So instead, the developers of Ethereum chose to use this JSON RPC protocol that allow you to basically uh, create dynamically as many endpoints uh, as you want. 
So first of all, you have this problem of JSON RPC that is not as standard as a REST API, so slightly more complicated for a web developer. And another problem of this API is that you have to specify a certain uh, encoding for uh, sending data to the function of your smart contract, and that's not super easy. So we need a library to help us, and that's what is Web3. So Web3 is a JavaScript library. You can install it very easily with NPM, the package manager of Node.js. So Web3 is what we call an isomorphic library. Sounds complicated, right? But it's not. It just means that you can use it on the back end with Node.js or in the front end in your browser. So in order for Web3 to work, you need to have access to an Ethereum node. So an Ethereum node is a computer that runs the software of the Ethereum blockchain. So in the Ethereum network, you have many of these nodes. So you need to have access to one of these in order to execute a web stream. So do you have any friend that run any Ethereum node? No? Oh, I'm sorry, you can't use web stream. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> no, okay, so you have several solutions. So. One solution is to run your own Ethereum node. So if you want to run on mainnet, the, the main blockchain of the, the, the blockchain of Ethereum, you will need to create an EC2 instance on AWS, for example, and, and probably you'll need uh, quite a, a high, a, a very powerful machine because the Ethereum uh, software requires a lot of, uh, of storage and a lot of, um, of, uh, of processing power, etc. So it might be a bit expensive to do it. So instead of doing this, what you could do is to use a service like Infura that expose an API that allow you to interact with its own Ethereum nodes, or in other words, it's like a managed service for uh, Ethereum nodes. Uh, it's totally free. Uh, it's very easy to use. You don't need to manage uh, any specific Ethereum node yourself. You just create an account and you just say, hey, I want to access the Ethereum API. Uh, they give you an endpoint uh, and you use this URL and, and that's it. So that's very easy to do. So keep in mind that you will only need this access to Infra if you are interacting with a smart contract on mainnet, so the real network of Ethereum or a public test net like Robstan or Covan, but as long as you're doing local development with Ganache, you don't need any of this and your Web3 object can connect directly to Ganache, like no need for any infra here. So once you have your access to an Ethereum node, you will need to instantiate Web3. So you will import Web3 in your project and you will create a connection to your Ethereum node so you will have an instance of Web3. And with this instance of Web3, after you're gonna configure some smart contract. So the way you're gonna configure smart contract is by passing an interface that describe all the function that can be called from outside the blockchain. So we call this the ABI. And you also need to uh, provide the address of, of your smart contract. So you pass this to your instance of Web3 and after you will have what we call a contract instance. So that's an other object that is created by Web3. And once you have this, you will be able to interact with your smart contract. So you'll be able to use the two API of Ethereum, the call API and the transaction API. So besides interacting with smart contract, the Ethereum API also has other capabilities like uh, giving you the list of all your Ethereum addresses, giving you some information uh, about the network and many other things. So with Web3, you can also use all these other API of Ethereum. So in this video, I'm just talking, but in the next videos of this series, we're gonna actually code together and I'm gonna show you with code everything that I've explained to you before, as well as many other stuff like how we can listen to events, etc. 
By the way, if you haven't done it already, make sure to get your hand on my cheat sheet for Web3 where you'll get all the most important information about Web3 in a content format. This is free. If you want to get your hand on it, you follow the link in the description. All right, that's it for this introduction to Web3. In the next video, I'm going to show you how you can install Web3 in your project. Thanks for watching and see you for the next video. Bye-bye.